What is up, you damn gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful gamers? We welcome back to all playing games. This is Mario Connor in the internet where we like to discuss about RPGs. If you like the content, if you like to have these conversations with Mario James, I would very much like to invite you. Like always, please hit that like button, it really helps me, like you have an idea. So, Dragon's Dogma 2, I told you, right? <laughs> I freaking told you. I have been rambling about Dragon's Dogma 2 being a real thing, being something that actually does exist for, for, for over a year now. And it was actually finally announced. And since I had been covering the thing quite extensively, I do have some knowledge, I do have some information that might be of interest of you to give that weight a little bit more satisfied, to keep the quench, the thirst that we have for Dragon's Dogma 2 at bay, at some extent. So here are some things that we know about the game, because like I said, we actually do know quite a lot of stuff if we dig under the rocks. The very first thing, that uh, this is a confirmed thing, all of the sources are going to be on the video description, but the game is set to be in Grancis. It is confirmed to be in Grancis. Now, some of the people that has played this game, that have played this game, might be like, yeah, dude, like, tell me something new. The thing is that this world, it's filled with so many mythology and the cosmology of it. Everything is so well thought. Now, some people may argue that the main narrative, the main storyline of the game, it's not that impressive, and I get you. But the thing is that the narrative of this game is not told directly to you. Rather, it actually develops into a beautiful, beautiful narrative, which, which is basically the dogma of the dragon, the dragon's dogma, later on in the game. So, that said, the game bases itself in the cycle philosophy. Think of, for example, something like Dark Souls. Although there is a huge difference between the cycle philosophy for Dark Souls and Dragon's Dogma. That being the, the case of Dark Souls, which the cycle philosophy that they hold is that there is always renewal. There is a kingdom, the kingdom dies, the kingdom falls, there is something that starts the fall of the kingdom and then on, on the ashes of it, a new one, a new fire is going to be there. The philosophy of the unending cycle for Dragon's Dogma is quite a little bit different. The world is constantly changing, but it goes back to what it was before. The dogma of the dragon, the dragon's dogma, it's basically this unending cycle of the Arisen, which ends up being a dragon and ends up ascending either to divinity, <laughs> hashtag spoiler alert, or becoming the dragon itself to repeat the cycle to see if there are people willing enough to become the divinity or to become the dragon. Now, if you place Dragon's Dogma online into play, there is a whole lot of stuff out there that you can meddle around with. There's all kind of different dragons, elemental dragons, and the narrative, it diluted itself quite a little bit more, although I am not going to get that much into it, because the narrative for Dragon's Dogma online, I wouldn't be sure to say, I wouldn't be sure to say enough that the game is canon. So right now we're going to focus on the main game, which uh, for the main game, The Dark Reason and the Netflix anime show, they do seem to fall under the same rock, which is the unending cycle. Now, if there is this unending cycle, what the hell happens to the story? What, where's the, the new thing that we are going to experience in a new sequel? Is it just going to repeat endlessly and endlessly? Well, yeah, but if you have played Dark Reason, then you know that there's actually something in the the, the convoluted universes. Think of it. Think of it like the the, the, the world of Dragon's Dogma, like the several multiverses which have a lot of stuff happening. But they do change quite a lot depending on the Arisen's actions. So they do have liberty enough to actually have the Arisen do something different. Also, it leads us to. One very important aspect that I would very much love to speak about, which is the engine with with the, the one the, the one engine that they are building the game upon, which is the re-engine. This is also confirmed as well. We know that the game has been being built on the re-engine. Now with more technology, 
we have more places to explore. Do have in mind that if you have played Dragon's Dogma, then you know uh, there are other kingdoms out there, there are other places that you can explore out there. So it's not intrinsically basically just Grancis. Of course, it has said officially that it will be set in Grancis, but maybe we will be getting to explore some other places. In the mythology of this game, of this universe, it is said that the dragon is always going to attack some uh, a, a different kingdom. And then there is this alliance where the other kingdoms ally themselves to fight off the dragon. But that is only an illusion, because it's all happening in Grancis. And the cycle is repeating itself and the, the story of each reason is going to be different. I do have in mind that with more technology we might actually get to explore to change the narrative a little bit and explore the surrounding kingdoms, which would give us more versatility to the game. Speaking of the re-engine, what do we know about the gameplay? Hideaki Itsuno, the original game director, which is the very same game director for Devil May Cry games, is at the helm of the production and the development of this game. He's the direction, he's leading the project. One very important thing to note is that the combat system designer is no longer working with, in, with Capcom. Ryota Suzuki is working on Final Fantasy 16, which leads, leaves the, 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 door, the door open. Is this combat system going to be as amazing as it was in Dragon's Dogma? Because Dragon's Dogma was a very, very flaw game. It's a diamond in rough. But the thing that actually got us gamers to faithfully devote ourselves to this masterpiece of a game, it's the combat and how beautiful, how beautiful really that combat is. If Ryota Suzuki is no longer in here, is the combat going to be as amazing as it used to be? I have to be, I'm fairly sure that it is. I also, I will also be leaving you a interview that Hideaki Itsuno did where he spoke about the combat and mechanics. Yes, Ryota Suzuki did design the combat, but if you read that interview, you will notice that it's actually being led by Hideaki Itsuno and he's actually saying, directing the buttons the, the actions that the characters have to make, so if we get a new combat designer, if Hideaki Itsuno is leading and teaching that combat designer what he wants to be accomplished, then I think that we are in the green light for a perfect, perfect, amazing combat system. It is worth to mention as well that item assets recycling is a very, very common thing in gaming industry. It is a very, very common thing, and just to name something, just to put an example, some people believe that Assassin's Creed Odyssey is just a reskin for Assassin's Creed Origins, and that Valhalla is a reskin for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is not the case. <laughs> Valhalla is a reskin of Origins. It is from the same developers, but companies always recycle their assets. If you have played Devil May Cry and then you see some of the combat animations for Dragon's Dogma, you will see that they share the same animations. You can very well definitely see Virgil on using the same assets and animations that the mages used in Dragon's Dogma. And we are speaking about different engines, so they manage to create this engine and still be able to maintain the assets. So, the combat system of Devil May Cry 5 is out there and it's amazing. The combat system for Dragon's Dogma is a whole lot more deeper than all of that, but we do have the base assets, so everything is already there. The foundations are already there, so you shouldn't be afraid of what's going to happen with the combat system because with Hideaki, Itsuno and all of the assets that they have and all of the foundations that they have, everything should be in the clear. Which leads us to the next point, which is one of the juicy ones, and I know that you guys are very interested in. The release date, baby. So, if we actually take a look at the development time for the games that Hideaki Itsuno has directed, not being pro producer, not being at any other kind of key position, but directed, the difference between publishing is three to four years. 
So how long? Uh, a lot of people, I, I have seen many rumor out there saying that Dragon's Dogma has been in development for like quite some years now. Dragon's Dogma 2, I mean. And I am not positively sure about that, but I can tell you that I do not believe that that is the case. And I do not believe that that is the case for something very simple. Hideaki Ichuno announced that he would start working on a project right after he finished with uh, the special edition Dev the Devil May Cry 5 Virgil edition which was launched on December 2020. So it has been uh, a year and a half since then. After that he did announce that he was he, he was working on the project. So you might say that pre-production for Dax that Dragon's Dogma 2 started on um, parallel when he was just wrapping up things, wrapping things up with the special edition Devil May Cry for Virgil special edition on Devil May Cry 5. And then, right after that, he started working on Dragon's Dogma 2. So that leaves us a gap, a time gap of a year and a half that he has been working in Dragon's Dogma 2. So, a lot of people thanks to the Capcom leak, believed that the game was going to be launched on 2022. It might have been the initial plan because the leak it ended up being correct. We all know that the Capcom leak was a, a thing, was was actually legit. It was 100% real. All of the games announced that had so far had been announced, Dragon's Dogma 2 included. And while they did have milestones, I believe that Hideaki Tsuno has been working on the project from, for a year and a half. That being the case, if we actually take into consideration that the time that he takes to develop games is 3-4 to four years, I am posit positively sure that the game will be launched in 2023 at the earliest. And if not, definitely, definitely we're going to see it on 2024. So that is pretty much everything that you need to know about the gameplay, the world, announcements, release date of Dragon's Dogma 2. I am so very happy. Tell me, let's let's talk in the comments below everything about Dragon's Dogma 2. Are you guys excited about Dragon's Dogma 2? I am so very goddamn excited. Uh, I'll be seeing you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people. Remember that if no one has told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person, you're indeed a gorgeous and beautiful person, and that if you have not liked the video and subscribed to the channel, then please do so before you close the door. Have a beautiful day, and I'll be seeing you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Goodbye.